Aujourd'hui, uh, je veux parler de uh, my personal favorite group of cashback cards straight from the strong reputation via Bank of America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can hear the groans, okay, but hear me out, seriously. Hey, old Zumpuck here. My God, I feel like I have a lot of credit cards, right? Even my wifey these days rolls her eyes uh, uh, at me whenever I get another card. I can feel the judgment, okay? She's basically like, what are you doing, okay? We don't need more credit. <laughs> I mean, she's right, of course. I'm at almost 20 cards at this point, and I definitely don't need more. Uh, but the credit card game can be fun, right? As long as we never ever pay interest, right? Right, guys? That's the ironclad rule. Don't break it, please. Okay, general, uh, generalities aside, I am super excited about today's episode because we are finally getting to my Bank of America cards. Once again, I feel like I need to caveat this uh, beginning with, uh, I know Bank of America also doesn't have a stellar rep, but it is working out for me personally so far. I see that uh, I use them actually, uh, not just for credit card, but also for our household banking and some investments as well via Merrill Edge, which is owned by Bank of America, right? It's definitely not the best web website or have the best service, but I'd say generally my experience with them is okay, serviceable. So surprisingly today I'll sing to its praises, at least on the credit card side of things. Oh, I also have to toss out a giant BOA specific caveat, and that's the fact that I do uh, have investments with them. Because of that, my account has a 75% cash back boost, right, uh, in, in terms of their rewards extra rewards program. And this is really what makes the BOA ecosystem worth it for me. Uh, so if you don't have that level of status with BOA, these cards are just okay. But if you do, well, this is why I use these all of the time. Hmm? Anyway, if you're intrigued by what I might say, please subscribe, like, comment, and all those uh, social media buzzwords or whatever, because I am rich enough for me and I'll be great regardless. Now, so first, let me just get the boring one out of the way, okay? And that is the uh, BOA Unlimited Cash Card. And it's just a flat 1.5% uh, uh, cash back card. This by itself uh, is kind of meh, right? But the rewards boost I mentioned earlier, that 1.5% becomes 2.625%. And that's just pretty darn good for the myriad of purchases that doesn't fall into uh, the, more, the better well-known categories, right? Uh, as I've mentioned before, I actually have other 1.5% uh, cashback cards from Capital One and Chase. Both of those lose to, the, to this card because this card does effectively do that at 2.625%. However, I still ended up using the Capital One card over this one because this card has a hard transaction fee. So when I'm traveling, this card's increase rate is not, it isn't high enough to counter that fee, right? So that's the general complaint against BOA cards in, uh, uh, because I don't think any of their no annual fee cards actually uh, mixes that foreign transactions fee. But for reasons I'll get to in a bit, this card actually became becomes my only uh, Bank, of America card, uh, Bank of America card that sits in a drawer, despite this generally high cashback rate. Hmm. Ah. Now onto the latest card that I got this year, which is the Bank of America Premium Rewards card. This one uh, has a $95 annual fee. My original plan was to downgrade this card after year one. Uh, at, because after year one, I've gotten my sign-up bonus. But at, at this point, I've actually changed my mind and we'll try to keep it around for year two to see if my calculations are indeed correct and it is worth uh, it despite that annual fee. Now to justify the annual fee, uh, it is actually quite simple. This card gives you a $100 airline incidental credit, similar to the one that the Amex Platinum have, except that you don't even have to pick a specific airline beforehand. So basically, if I can book enough tickets via, say, Southwest with their seat selection fee, which counts, then this credit will go to use pretty much pretty quickly, right? We shall see if I can actually use both this airline incidental as well as the Amex one in the next full year of 2024. Anyway, the main reason I would like to keep this card around is because its base cashback rate is actually the exact same as the unlimited cash card, right? Which is at my status worth 2.625%. But because this is a premium travel card, uh, it actually does not have a foreign transaction fee. So as long as I can justify the annual fee, this card actually has a place in my wallet as a catch-all card, not just for in the States, but also while traveling internationally. After all, 2.625% is a significant improvement over 1.5%. 
that I was getting with Capital One, uh, okay? A straight up, when you really think about it, a straight up 2.6% for everything everywhere is just a great default card, just generally, okay? So yeah, I just wish that I had this card earlier, you know, before our big French Riviera trip, but never learn, I guess. Okay, finally, the star of the show is a group of Bank of America custom cash cards and its variants, partnership variants that I have, okay? At this point, I actually have four separate uh, Bank of America custom cash uh, cards. You can look this up on the internet, see it has a bunch of partner variants. Uh, they all functionally act alike. The only difference is the cosmetic different images that you can get uh, you know, uh, on the actual card, right? So the only downside to this card is the generic complaint that I have that they also have foreign transactions fees, so they're not useful for international. But other than that, the base rewards rate is 3% for uh, custom category, which can be changed once a month, 2% on groceries, and 1% for everything else. Now, with that 75% bonus that I mentioned all the way at the beginning of the video, video these rates go up to 5.25%, 3.5%, and 1.75%. Okay, We're going to ignore the baseline 1.75% because, uh, like I mentioned, there are literally two BLA cards that I have where the baseline uh, uh, cashback is already 2.625, so that's better than 1.75%. What's left is 3.5% for groceries, which is really, really decent for a card with no annual fee. And 5.25% for all these Bank of America custom categories, right? You can easily Google the list of what these categories are, but I'll tell you what I have, because since I have four cards, I have four different ca custom categories set on each one. And that those are online shopping, travel, gas, and dining, right? What I love about BOA is how broadly defined, uh, for example, online shopping is. This actually includes Amazon.com, which is all of Amazon, Walmart.com, as long as you're shopping online, right? Mobile phone bill, and all streaming services. Honestly, when in doubt, if, if I'm paying digitally, I just try the card with this category and it usually qualifies, right? That's a really, really pleasant surprise. Uh, same with travel category, pretty broad. It's not just airlines and hotels, but also Airbnb and parking, bus fares. Uh, now, the, the other two, dining and gas, these are uh, pretty high, uh, you know, at 5.25%, but there are more competition for these well-defined categories, right? I will mention that for the 5.25% and 3.5% rates, there is a cap of $2,500 $2, per quarter, which averages out about $833 a month, but that is per card. So the only time I've run into hitting these caps uh, is for my online shopping cart, one where we're buying furniture on the internet, okay? But that's where the flexibility of having multiple uh, separate custom cashback card comes from, okay? If I knew I'm gonna spend probably more than 25 per quarter uh, that quarter, most likely I would just switch one of my custom cash, let's say the travel card, to a backup online shopping for a month or so to absorb that extra spend. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> so, in conclusion, are all BOA cards rock stars? Nope, at least not the unlimited cash now that the premium rewards card is here basically to do everything the unlimited cash did and more. But I do love the flexibility of all the custom cash back cards, right? I didn't even mention that Bank of America actually has more categories that I personally really never set it to. Uh, these are drugstores and home improvement and furnishings, right? Obviously, if you frequent these establishments, it may be a better choice for you. I'm just lazy and would prefer to have my card set to a single category so I never change it, right? But you know, if I'm ever in the mood to become a more DIY Home Depot type of person, at least I know the option is there to get that sweet, over 5% cash back, okay? At the end of the day, optimizing is just for fun, okay? I know I'm not at the end of the credit card game, but I think I'm pretty cl close, right? At over 5% for almost, you know, a lot of common spends. I mean, I find it hilarious. This setup gets me actually higher cash back on Amazon purchases than Amazon's own credit card. Just remember, use all cards wisely so you can be winning the game and letting the rest of the consumers pay for your rewards. Like, so what? tell me, what's your setup like? Did I move the needle on how you feel about Bank of America? Do let me know in the comments, okay? Cheers, I'll approach it.